morning, children. You are all welcome to Sunday school. Let us pray. In Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, we thank you for your protection throughout the week. We thank you for bringing us to your presence once again to learn at your feet. We are asking this morning that you come and wash us with your blood, save, sanctify, and baptize us with your Holy Ghost. Above all, increase our faith in you. And at the end of this lesson, let us all go back home rejoicing that indeed that we have learned at your feet. Thank you, eternal King of glory, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Good morning once again and welcome to Primary Power Class. Let us look at this short video clip temperature not as cold tonight more clouds southwest breeze down to about 23 degrees here's your seven day forecast a whopping 42 for your high on saturday that's still about eight degrees below normal a couple snow showers on sunday shouldn't be a big deal those actually start saturday night and then veterans day monday in the morning a couple snow showers again and then cold children that is the weatherman do you know what a weatherman job is yes it tells people what the weather is going to be like. It might tell you it's going to be sunny and hot. It might tell you to snow. Or even it might tell you there's going to be a storm. It might even say it's going to be very, very rainy. But do you know that that is all a weatherman can do? He can't change the weather. But the Bible tells us about one who can change the weather. His name is Jesus. The title of our lesson is Peace Be Still. Our memory verse is taken from Mark chapter 4, verse 39. Mark 4, 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. Our Bible reading is taken from Mark chapter 4, from verses 35 to 41. And I read Mark 4, 35. And the same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. 40. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? 41. And the last verse. And they feared ex exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. Children, let us close your Bible and look up. Yes, this is the story of Jesus with the disciples. One day, Jesus and his disciples were in a boat, passing over to the other side of the sea. Jesus must have been very tired from his day of teaching the people. So Jesus went to the back part of the ship and went asleep. Now, Jesus' disciple couldn't just switch on the TV set to check the weather and find out that, that a big storm is coming because there was no TV set then to switch on. So while Jesus was sleeping, a great storm came and took Jesus' disciples by complete surprise. Soon the waves were so huge that the water began to fill the ship. The disciples were afraid. They did not like that awful storm and the way the boat rocked and tossed. What if the boat were to sink? What are the disciples going to do? Meanwhile, Jesus was still sleeping peacefully. So the disciples decided to go wake Jesus up, scared out of their mind and afraid for their lives. They shouted, Master, wake up! We might all die in this awful storm. Don't you care? They cried to Jesus. Children, the disciples were surprised about what Jesus did next. He did not get up and start screaming, What is happening to us? Like most of us would have done. 
He wasn't even worried. He simply got up and said to the storm, Peace be still. Children, guess what happened next? The sea became calm again. The wind stopped. The disciples were amazed that the wind and the sea would obey Jesus. When everything was quiet again, Jesus turned to his disciples. He asked them why they were afraid. Jesus wanted the disciples to have faith in him. I'm sure the disciples were happy to know that Jesus really cared for them. Jesus is wonderful. He cared for us too and is always with us. We don't ever have to be afraid. Children, what is a storm to us? Our storm might be a nightmare. It might be something very scary. We might be afraid when there's a storm when it's raining. But if that ever happened to you, just stop and ask Jesus in prayer to take care of you. He will. Even if the storm does not stop right away, Jesus will put a real peace in your heart. He will take the fear away. You can always trust Jesus. Many of us don't understand what God can do. Children, the fact is, nothing is impossible for God. And he can do way more than what we can imagine. Now, some things may scare you like he did the disciples, because we are human beings. However, the Bible says that God is love. Jesus loves his children very well as well. So what kind of storm is going on in your life that you need Jesus to come? Do you really believe he can fix the situation? Or will you cry and scream like the disciples did? Or will you go to Jesus in prayer? Jesus really does care. But you must ask him to calm the storm and trust that he will in his time. So talk to God in your prayer today because he is more than able to calm the storm. The key statement is, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Activities for ages 2 to 5. The peaceful sea. Draw lines to connect the dots and finish the picture of the peaceful sea after the storm. Then color your picture. Ages 6 to 8. Find and circle the words hidden in the puzzle below. Our lesson for next week is Lesson 11C, titled A Hole in the Roof. That is the end of our lesson. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday and welcome to Answer Class. The lesson for today is Lesson 98, titled Provided with Power. Our memory verse is, but you shall receive power after that Holy Ghost is come upon you. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. We have many passages to read. We are not going to read all. We just read selected verses. Our text is from Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, we are reading, and chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. Open your Bible and read along with me. Acts 1 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them Clothing tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Four. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Chapter 3, 
from verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gates of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Three, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. 7. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Let's close the Bible and listen to the lesson. Before we go on, let's see little illustration to help us more in our lesson. All of us were born sinners. We've learned in our lesson about Adamic nature. Our unit theme this term is pardoned, prepared, and powerful. When the Spirit of God convicts us of our sin and we repent of our sin, ask God for forgiveness, then God will forgive us. You see how this is dirty and polluted? So when we pray for salvation, our sin forgiven, that one we go out. But we still have Adamic nature that must be removed. So applying the blood of Jesus the second time, which we studied last week, the second step will wash our heart. Let's see. This clean, empty heart is ready to receive the power of God. And God has provided to fill us with his power to overflow. That's the Spirit of God in us that will make us an effective Christian, effective witness for God. Again, let us look at another illustration. I have flashlight here is supposed to give me light but without power there will not be anything so let's put the battery now and see
it has got power now so it can give us light that will take us to our lesson story when chloe was puzzled the dad asked her why are you puzzled is it your school work he said no it's my sunday school lesson i've been saved i've been sanctified why do i need baptism of the holy ghost the dad said it is important to be an effective witness for God, we need it. But thank God, his brother just came in and asked dad for his laptop to finish his assignment. Dad gave that illustration that you see, the computer can do the job, but we cannot be taking computer about because it has to plug with to the power. But we can take laptop about it will go with us. Jesus, when he was on earth, he told the disciple to wait and receive power to work for him. When we are saved and sanctified, we have the power of God in a measure with us. But when we are filled with the Holy Ghost, it's in us. So, Holy Ghost, it is important for us to be an effective witness for God. That will take us to our statement, which says, it's even for me. So today, the Holy Ghost is for you. God bless you. May you pray and ask God for the Holy Ghost today. Our activities is, do I need it? Read Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 again and fill in the missing words and put the correct numbers on the line in the battery. God bless you, children. Our lesson for next week is Lesson 99, Reaching Out to Others. God bless you. Shall we pray? Oh, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for teaching us always, letting us know that we need your spirit so that we can be effective witness for you. Help us to pray. Those that are not yet saved, save them, sanctify, baptize with Holy Ghost and fire. Help us to be an effective witness for you. And at last, take us to heaven, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, children. God bless you. Have a blessed Sunday. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining today's Sunday School. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.